Hi there, I'm Danny Flex and welcome to the latest edition of Seconds Out Reflections. I'm here every Monday at 4.30pm to look back on the boxing action over the weekend. Um, Apologise in advance uh, for my sore throat and the uh, gravelly voice, the 60 a day habit voice that is pushing out, um, but I've fallen victim uh, to the bug that's going around, unfortunately. Um, but I'm sure I'll be on the mend. Don't feel sorry for me, I'm a brave soldier. Um, anyway, Saturday night, we saw Sky's much vaunted new era launch um, on uh, yeah on Saturday at Wembley Arena. Uh, replacement main event, David Avenesian proved, as we thought he would, to be a class above. Uh, Middleton's brave Liam Taylor, blasting him out of there. Um, perfectly timed stoppage from referee Mark Lyson in round two. And there's been a lot of talk about the Sky Show, particularly from a TV perspective rather than being live in the arena, luckily enough. Things I do for you guys, I watched it from my sofa so I could give you the full uh, reflection on my TV viewing experience. Um, and it was, I think on Twitter I gave it a C plus, um, and on further reflection, maybe it should have been a C minus, but we'll, we'll go through it. I think from uh, the plus points to start with, there were very few uh, long gaps between fights, um, not too much filler as we've become used to seeing on some of the longer um, matchroom shows, which is good. Um, also, the main event started around 10 o'clock uh, UK time, which again, for old codgers like me uh, who get up early um, at the weekends as well, it's a good thing. Um, get to bed pretty early after filing my report and putting it on the uh, Seconds Out website. But me aside, I think most people are grateful that main events are in a more palatable time than having to wait till 11, 11.30. So Sky get a tick in the box for that. Quite enjoyed the commentary. I've never had a, a massive issue with Matthew Macklin as a pundit. I enjoy Adam Smith. Would have liked to have seen maybe Andy Clark um, commentating maybe on some of the earlier fights like they used to on the matchroom shows. Um, but overall, quite happy with that. Um, so not too bad on that score. But then we come to the negative side now. It kind of struck me a little bit like when a couple break up and whoever Mays makes that fateful decision says, yeah, I'm leaving you for such and such. Now, this isn't from personal experience, I should say, although I do have some experience in that regard um, on both sides of the coin, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, when they say, right, I'm leaving you for such and such because he's more exciting than you, more ambitious than you, whatever. The, it does sound like I'm talking about myself now, doesn't it? But yeah, whatever the, the reason may be. And then the person who's left behind, you know, bitter and sorrowful, really not about me, um, will say, oh, I'll show them. I can be just as exciting as whoever. And um, that's kind of what Sky seemed to be trying to do, um, to show Eddie Hearn and Matchroom they could be just as forward thinking and cutting edge as uh, the zone. You know, Eddie, Eddie's made a point, Eddie Hearn's made a point of saying that one of the main reasons they joined the zone was because they were able to take more control of the production um, and the marketing side. And there's a lot more options open to them on that score. Now, Sky's response to this appears to be uh, a heat map, which has been talked about a lot, which um, nice bit of kit, you know, shows where um, boxers spend most of their time, which areas of the ring, who's skirting the perimeter, who's holding centre ring, that kind of thing. Um, but it was hyped up massively for what was really just a bunch of blue and red dots on the screen um, and got a lot of uh, mocking, mockery um, on social media as a result. Um, add to that the uh, Johnny Nelson interviewing people in the changing rooms and I couldn't work out why it was at a lower volume than the rest of the broadcast until someone said to me, it's supposed to give the impression that we're, as a viewership, as an audience, we're eavesdropping on private conversations within the confines, the sanctity of the changing rooms. Um, so I kind of get it as a concept, but I don't think it really worked. It just made it really hard to hear. And I was constantly turning my TV up and turning it down. I now understand um, how people feel when I don't get the audio levels right when I'm doing an interview between me and a subject. Um, so, yeah, I feel your pain. But, yeah, and, and Spencer Fear, and I know uh, we've got an interview of him going live tonight, actually, where he doesn't mention this, I don't believe. But he said on social media that, he didn't think it was respectful to Johnny Nelson to have uh, one of the best cruiserweights of all time, former world champion, interviewing novices, uh, in some cases, in the changing rooms pre-fight. 
um, and should have had maybe a more prominent role. Whether you agree with that or not, having him um, speaking to them at low volume to kind of appear different or, or modern didn't really work for me. Maybe it's because I'm old. Um, but hey, Johnny's old. Johnny's older than me. So, you know, no excuses there. Didn't feel, didn't, wasn't feeling it um, to borrow one from the kids at all. Um, and I just think it, it all felt a bit too try hard. Um, you know, we've got some new stuff going on and some new stuff on social media. and We've got a heat map and we're going to go into the, the changing rooms and show you little bits and pieces. And I don't know why I'm putting on that voice. But the basic thing is, no, didn't work for me at all. Um, I think from an in-ring perspective, getting the fights going quickly, all that sort of stuff. I like that. I don't think there was enough competitive action. I think the um, British eliminator between uh, Jamal Ledoux and Jermaine Brown was the the most the best contest on the show in terms of you know how how compelling it was how watchable um, and it was the only evenly matched one um, as it turned out in the ring Liam Taylor brave though he was 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 got rid of in quick time uh, Richard Riakpour shook off the ring rust and was given a harder time than expected but still was ahead um, for for the majority of the fight no one really thought he was ever going to lose that same with Ebony Jones who we got to see, Mikhail Lowell, um, who I think was on the uh, social channels rather than on the main broadcast. So, yeah, I mean, we need more competitive action. We've got to put in the caveat that, of course, at very late notice, Chris Eubank Jr.'s opponent, Anatoly Muratov, was prevented from boxing in their headline fight due to medical problems um, by the Board of Control. So, they Avanesian against Taylor was promoted into main event status at short notice. But they could have rejigged the running order a little bit and put some more, perhaps, exciting fights on the main broadcast. As someone else pointed out on Twitter, the Joe Pigford fight pitted uh, two guys with really high knockout ratios and exciting styles against each other and wasn't on the main broadcast. And as it turned out, it did lead to a fifth round stoppage. So probably would have been wise to have put that on the main broadcast. Um, yeah, it wasn't wasn't most exciting or evenly matched show um, I've seen in recent times. They've got another one, thankfully, in two weeks in Newcastle. So we'll see how that one goes. Huey Fury topping that against Christian Hammer. Um, Savannah Marshall, Lewis Ritson both on there as well. I would expect the teething problems to be um, slightly overcome by that point. I don't know. Can you be slightly overcome? To be slightly mitigated, maybe, would be better by that point. Um, but yeah, I think there's certainly things to work on. Wasn't a massive fan of the MC either. and No disrespect to him. Um, but I don't think he's... He, he had an American accent, but I'm not sure he is American. It certainly didn't sound authentic um, to me. And it, if he is American or Canadian or whatever, I, I apologise. Um, or maybe he's just been living in Britain too long. But yeah, and, and I think he made a few errors as well, um, which was picked up as everything is these days on social media. So that's another thing to look at. But hopefully everyone from the production team to the uh, you know in, in stadium staff or whatever you want to call them, the, the MC, the pundits, the broadcasters, the... The production um, team, the talent team, to quote uh, the zone. Hopefully, they all improve as time goes on. It is new for everyone. I don't want to be overly harsh. Hence the C plus. Um, but yeah, I think there's a lot of things they could have done differently. Um, and I think the most important thing, above all else, of course, is what happens inside the ring. So let's hope we have uh, more competitive fights throughout the card. Um, next time and maybe start a bit earlier if you can get a longer time slot on Sky rather than putting everything on Facebook or, or wherever or YouTube uh, ironic I know um, but if you can do that start from you know 7, 6.30 rather than 7.30 um, on Sky Sports that might help too um, but yeah I'm trying to be as balanced as possible um, certainly not as much of a hater as some of the um, more um, anti-show stuff I saw um, on Twitter uh, on Saturday night. Uh, but yeah, so that's what I thought of it. But I want to hear what you guys think, particularly guys in the UK who watched it on Sky. What did you make of the whole um, package from the stuff in the ring to the production side? Uh, what did you make of it? Um, how do you think it compares, of course, with BT Sport and The Zone, who are the main two competitors, or even Channel 5, um, who show the Hennessy Sports uh, content? Be good to know. Um, and just, yeah, from people outside the UK, you obviously had different production, but you still saw the same action in the ring. What did you make of David Avenesian? I thought he looked excellent. Um, did what you're supposed to do against an opponent who's not really at your level. Um, breezed through him with the minimum of fuss and maximum efficiency. 
Um, where do you think he should go next? Can he be a real contender at world level? We know he struggled a little bit at that kind of world level um, in the past. He's, he's lost there. But is he the best he's ever been right now? He's on a great run of form. He's proven dominant at European level. Can he make that extra step now and get a genuine world-class victory um, for the first one he's had in a number of years? Uh, let me know what you think or who'd be an ideal next opponent for him um, and who you'd like to see uh, yeah, who you'd like to see him fight next, but also who you'd like to see Eubank Jr. return against. Now it's going to be a bit later than planned. I'll be back on Thursday for a very busy um, Flex Expectations, where we'll be looking ahead to not one, not two, but three shows. Uh, Frank Warren goes in Birmingham. Uh, Liam Smith and Anthony Fowler settle Scouse Pride um, in Liverpool, of course, uh, on Saturday night. And then in the early hours, and we'll be doing a watch along for this as well. Tyson Fury and Deontay Wilder cross swords for the third time out in the US. Um, and we'll be covering all three fight weeks, all three shows, including a watch along. So don't go anywhere but seconds out. And also, just to note this, this week we're 3,000 short now. So this week, at some point, given it's a big fight week, we expect to pass the half a million subscribers mark. Um, we've been waiting for this for quite some time, as you can imagine, and we're all very excited about it. Um, yeah, 497,000, I believe, last time I checked. Um, so 3,000 more subscribers and we'll go over half a million and solidify our place as one of the biggest boxing channels uh, in the world on YouTube. So a little bit of a self-congratulatory backslapping there. But yeah, I look forward to this week for a number of reasons, that just being one of them. Give me your comments below about the subjects I've raised. I'll be seeing you on Thursday and then next week, Monday, of course, at the same time, 4.30pm for Reflections. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all soon.